Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back for the final chapter of the week, as well as the start of a new section, actually, which mm -hmm. is section four, that literary structure of the book of Revelation. Interesting one to close the week out on, the woman and the dragon. <laughs> yeah. So we'll probably take some guesses at what this is talking about to some degree, uh, but this is really talking about the clash between Jesus and Satan, kind of really focusing on that battle before it's all over, mm -hmm. is kind of the beginning of this point now. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting one today. It's only 17 verses long in this chapter, but still a whole lot to go over. Exactly. Okay. Before we get started into the chapter, I think it'd be good for us to look at the beginning of humanity. Okay. And that's in Genesis when Adam and his wife were made in God's image. And okay. you remember the story? Oh, by the way, Adam means red. Adam means red. Uh-huh. You could call him red for short. Okay. Now, I actually did not know this, and we actually paused for a moment so that I could look it up because I was like, aha, I know something that Bev does it. She was right. It's actually Adam in Hebrew means red or to be red, mm -hmm. but like the color red. I mm -hmm. never knew that. Uh -huh. The more you know. All right. And then a little bit as we go along. Okay. Adam and his wife were made in God's image. They were righteous, holy, and good. Mm-hmm. But God gave them a choice. They could eat of the tree of life and live forever, or right. they could choose to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And we know the story. God warned them, if you eat of that tree, you're going to die the day you eat thereof. Right. We talked about this before. Right. And you remember he ate it. He became naked. He realized he ate of that tree, realized that he was naked, mm -hmm. put fig leaves on him. Right. And God came walking. He realized he was naked and... Um, kind of that innocence gone. That yeah. innocence gone. He was now guilty and a sinner. Right. In right. the Bible, they call them sinners because they're guilty of sin, disobeying God. Mm -hmm. And I'm tying this in. I'm talking about this today because it was really interesting what God said to the serpent. Remember, He talked to Adam and his wife and the serpent. Right. And, and the serpent, of course, being the one that kind of tempted, tempted Eve, him. who then and, turned to Adam, and yes. kind of the whole and, domino effect there. Yeah, yeah, and that was Satan right. in the form of a serpent in that tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God says to the serpent, "You're cursed. Mm -hmm. You're going to be below all the animals, eating dust, and on the earth." Right. And basically, He goes on to say one of the most profound things. It's the first promise of. Jesus Christ to come in the whole book of in the in the whole Bible. It's okay. in Genesis three fifteen, and God says to the serpent, "I will put hatred between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers, and he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel." Mm -hmm. Now, just think, which is the mortal wound, the crushing of the head? That's what Jesus is going to do to Satan. Okay, Satan's going to strike his heel. Hmm. This all happens at the cross, but one's the mortal wound, and that's yeah. Jesus. One was Satan. kind of temporary, Jesus dying on the cross. He yes. comes back to life, but then really destroys Satan by crushing his head. Exactly, okay. Okay. exactly. So right after this happened, Adam named his wife Eve. It's mm -hmm. interesting. That word means life because through her offspring, that son, life would come again. Hmm. So the Lord God then took an animal and killed it and put skin garments over Adam and Eve. Right. And at that point, they were actually clothed. Mm -hmm. So we know that it wasn't the fig leaves that could clothe them. They couldn't clothe themselves of this inner nakedness. Yeah. And it was pointing forward to Jesus Christ, the lamb, that altar sacrifice would actually bring them back to their mm. innocence again. Wow. Wow. So fast forward to the New Testament mm -hmm. and we see the Virgin Mary. And the angel comes to her and he says, you're going to have a son and you're going to name him Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins. And she says, well, how can this be? I'm a virgin. Right, right. And the, the angel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So God is the Father of Jesus. He is the Son of God. Right. So that background gives us an understanding of what we're moving into right now in okay. Revelation 12. Okay. Okay. All right. So you can start right in there. Okay. All uh, right. So the story begins in Revelation using symbols to tell the story, of mm -hmm. course. Okay. In verses 1 and 2. All right. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and read. Again, if you have your Bibles, we're picking up in chapter 12. So verses 1 and 2. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. So who is the woman? We need to define this before we get going in this passage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So basically, it represents God's people. Okay. The lineage. So of- not necessarily Eve. That 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 honestly may have been my guess if you were asking me, but it's not. It's not Eve. It's not Mary. Okay. It's essentially the lineage through which Jesus would come. Okay. And so that was. Abraham's son promised, David's mm-hmm. son promised, all that lineage through the Israelites, mm-hmm. and which Mary was a part of a that. Part of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's God's people in the Old, and in the New Testament, it's the church. We've talked about the church in chapters yeah. 2 and 3 of Revelation. Everybody mm-hmm. who accepts Jesus right. are part of the church. Right. So it's all God's people, old or new, okay. is referred to by the woman. Uh, now, she's clothed in the sun, and Totally righteous. The moon is under her feet. That rules the darkness. There's no light in it. Oh, interesting. Okay. So she's yeah. over that kingdom okay. of the world. Okay, I, I see that symbolism, yeah. And she's wearing a crown of 12, 12, 12, 12 stars. stars. And that crown is a crown of victory. Mm-hmm. So victorious kingdom, 12. Yeah, kingdom is th- that number 12 associated with kingdom. Okay. And the kingdom of heaven. Wow, wow. So that's what it is. And she's about to give birth. She's pregnant, about to give birth to the son. Mm-hmm. The son of man. Because mm-hmm. Jesus had to come down as human. Right. As the son of man. Yes. Wow. So there's, we're, we're that far in the story right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Thank you for tying all that together. That's, I mean, it's just funny when you walk through those symbols, again, in light of the stuff we've gone over, really opens it up. And Ben, I'm trying to kind of just take a little bits of the time so we can kind yeah. of explain it as we go. Yeah, yeah, I think story. I think that's great. So verses three and four. Okay, verse three and four. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Well, you can guess who yeah. might this be. Clearly is the devil, right? <laughs> the devil. Okay. You got All right. Satan himself. Yeah. He has seven heads and on his heads are those crowns. Yeah. Now seven is limited. It's mm-hmm. limited time. Complete. Okay. It's not like forever and ever. This is a limited time. Mm-hmm. And the crowns he's wearing are crowns not of victory, but of rulership. Hmm. Okay. So he doesn't have the victory, but he's ruling. Yes. And he has ten horns. Well, horns are a symbol of power and strength. Okay. And we know that ten is that number for testing, trial, tribulation. Right. Yes, yes. It's all those kind of things mixed together. Right. The trial, tribulation, testing, all those things. Okay. His power and strength is in giving trials and tests. Okay. And of course, all the wicked angels are with him. It right. How it says like a third of... Yeah. Uh, uh, what did it say? A third of the stars, which I'm assuming would be those fallen angels that yes. are on the earth. They're okay. with him. Okay. And his intent is to destroy Jesus right at birth. Right. Before he could ever go to the cross. Yeah. When I'm reading that, the first thing that comes to my mind is when Herod tried to kill Jesus when he was an infant. You know, exactly. and, and of course, I mean, there's direction given to Joseph and Mary from angels and God leading them down to Egypt. So he wasn't killed. Mm-hmm. But I mean... It's wow. clear that the moment he was born, Satan was trying to destroy Going him. Going after him. Yeah. You're exactly right, Ben. Wow. So now let's pick up the story okay. further and verses 5 and 6. Okay. All right. Verse 5 and 6. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Mm-hmm. Okay, now that sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay. We, right <laughs> you know, we know what that one means, and we'll get there in just a second and remind ourselves. Okay. But she gives birth to a son. It's really clear. It's a male child. It has yes. none other than Jesus Christ. They want you to not right. miss the point. Right. Jesus will rule all nations with an iron scepter. It mm-hmm. will not bend, means that it will not change. It's absolute mm-hmm. righteousness. Mm-hmm. And we notice that he snatched up to heaven and he was resurrected and he is seated at the right hand of God. Right. Ruling right now as King of kings and Lord of lords. Now the woman going out in this next verse about going out into the wilderness and then we see that number again that we've seen mentioned before. Yes. So what is what is this about? For the woman, we can look back at the Old Testament just for a moment. Okay. And remember the Israelites, mm-hmm. when Moses led them out of Egypt, they had to go into the wilderness, into the desert. Yes. And while there, God protected them. Mm-hmm. He would put a 
shade of cloud by day to keep the sun from scorching them. Right. And he would have a fire by night so they'd have light. Yep. He was the manna for, from heaven so they could eat bread yeah. and have food in the yeah. desert. Whatever they needed, he was always providing. And he was the yeah. rock for the water. I mean, right. everything they needed was provided. And so it's kind of like this woman is fleeing into the desert for 1260 days. Mm -hmm. And we saw that before. It was the time of the two witnesses, remember? Yes. It was the three and a half years from the cross to the coming of the Lord. It's kind of another symbol of that time period, really, that we're in right now. Right now. And wow. God is protecting his people right now. Hmm. Wow. We're in his hand. No one can snatch us out. Isn't hmm. that good? Wow. So let's continue on with Jesus' victory over Satan. Okay. And that's verses 7 to 9. Okay, moving right along here. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So here we see there's a fight between Jesus and Satan. Mm -hmm. And basically there's just two sides. Yeah. And Jesus and his angels are fighting Satan and his angels. Yeah. And in case you miss it, who the dragon is, it tells you who he is right here in the passage. Okay. It says he's the ancient serpent. That's the one in the garden. Mm-hmm. In that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. And it's the devil or Satan. Mm -hmm. Now, Satan... So no guessing on who it no is. No <laughs> guessing. That enormous red dragon is Satan. I okay. mean, he tells you right Right, here. right. Can't miss that. But Jesus has already won. We know that. He yes. crushes Satan's head. And the proof, he was resurrected out of eternal death. Hmm. So this goes on with just a really neat passage here in verses 10 through 12. Okay, so starting in verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven... Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. You know, Ben, this is the, kind of the culmination of what has happened as far as the victory in Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. But the story goes on here mm -hmm. just a little bit more. Just what Sounds almost like it ends, but it doesn't really. Yeah, it kind of okay. goes on what's happening right now a little okay. bit more, just to give us the thought of what we can hang on to right now today. Okay. And it uh, talks about the dragon going after that woman still. Hmm. And it's, it's kind of like that symbol in the Old Testament. God carried the Israelites on wings. And it uses a symbol from the Old Testament that God carried the Israelites on wings like eagles mm -hmm. when they were out in the desert. Yeah. And it talks about that woman, that church, is given two wings of a great eagle. And that's mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hmm. And he carries them to fly to that place of protection in the middle of this desert in the world we're living in right now, mm -hmm. in this desert place. Mm -hmm. And for a time, times, and half a time. Now, that's an interesting thought. That's a time period from Daniel in the Old Testament. Okay. Time, times, and half a time. We're going to see it later in the book of Revelation. Okay. And basically, a time means a year. Mm -hmm. So it would be three and a half years. Oh, the okay. The same period from the it cross keeps, it to keeps the It keeps coming coven. back to that, but kind of a different way almost each time. Huh. And here it's time back to the beast that we're going to look at shortly okay. coming up. Okay. But Daniel's talking about that this their, their time of rain in the is over this desert time. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's referring to time, times, and half a time for the hmm. same period. During this time, the dragon's spewing out torrents of bitter water out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. It's like the accusations. Okay. Do you know Satan, that word means, that's his name, mm -hmm. Satan. And it means accuser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we know that the accuser is saying to God, you're not fair. Look at these people. They deserve to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. because they disobeyed you. Yeah. I mean, they're not perfect people down here. Right, right, right now. certainly. <laughs> Have you ever felt accused and thinking, I'm really a son or daughter of God? Right, I mean, the accusations right. is going on. Yeah. And so we see the story goes on here in Revelation symbolically. Mm -hmm. That whole torrent of water of accusation coming out of the... the coming the, out of the dragon. Coming out of that dragon, it all is swallowed up in a, in a hole in the earth. Hmm. And that shows that Jesus in the tomb 
took every accusation against oh, us, wow. and wow. it disappears in that tomb. Hmm. And it's just a neat. It's just such a neat description in, yeah, in I this love that symbolic symbolism. way yeah, yeah. that any accusation coming against us even now in this time in the desert when we yeah. when we sometimes get a little bit disrupted by right. the trials and tribulations coming against us. Yeah. I mean to me it just speaks to my own heart. It's yeah it has it has no impact there basically. Is absolutely, Jesus took it all. Wow. Absolutely no accusation against us. And then Jesus rose again. Jesus died, rose again, seated, reigning on the throne of God, mm -hmm. and the devil's still mad about everything, going after the <laughs> can rest of the offspring of the woman, which is all the rest right. of the people in the church, is symbolically. Yeah. Those are God's sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. They're the people that only obey God himself, hmm. not man. And they hold to the message of the two witnesses, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. They're hanging on to that. Wow. Wow. It's That's interesting. It. <laughs> it's wow. No, it's well, it's it's interesting because it's like you kind of see there there's different points in time where things are happening and you kind of figure out like, "Oh, this is where we're at. So there's some stuff mm -hmm. to come. There's some stuff that has happened." It's just fascinating how it all symbolically it means something, but it's all tied together. It's just I, I know I keep saying it. It's just really crazy to see how it all fits together. All fits together. Wow. That's it. Oh, man. Hey guys, well listen, chapter 12. yeah, chapter 12. So man, oh man, thank you so much for being here again, guys. We really do appreciate it. Beth, thank you so much again uh, for taking us through another one, chapter 12. Well, that's gonna do it for us for this week. Uh, coming up next week, you do not wanna miss it. We're starting it on chapter 13. Still in that uh, section four of the literary structure of the book, mm -hmm. but uh, some spooky stuff still coming up <laughs> <laughs> that I was told about when I was a kid. So well, I, I won't have you reveal if this is like, specific people, specific things coming up, symbolic, whatever, whatever, but uh, looking at a few beasts, a few marks of the beasts, six, 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 six. yeah, all uh, that stuff, that's all coming up. we next time. All coming up on morning. Monday. <laughs> so uh, make sure that you tune back in for that one. All right, guys, well, hey, well, listen, you all be good. Remember, Jesus is the victorious one. That's what this book is all about. He died, but he didn't just stay dead. He rose again. If you don't know Jesus, come to know him. Best decision you will ever make. Bev, thank you so much again. Guys, thank you. We love you. We'll see you back here on Monday. Have a good weekend.